Hello all you lovely lads and lasses, my name is the Corneus Lima, this is my wallpaper, and this is my cat who is sitting right next to me but you can't see him, sorry about that. And, well, another year's been flushed down the toilet of entropy and what a year it was, huh? I spent a lot of valuable time churning out reviews that five people watch and am continuing to do so, then, rather than doing some actual, you know, work. Uh, we've the US of A inaugurated an absolute fuckwit, and, um, yeah, it's, there's some stuff happened, you know, it's been a year, and because it's written on the most sacred of YouTube laws, I'm morally bound to do a top ten list of some sort, because that's it's just, them's the rules, apparently. I'm still a bit new to this YouTube thing, but them's the rules. So keep in mind that... Not every film on here will have a review on my channel, as I only started doing reviews in August, which just so happened to be the time when more shit came out of the film industry than an elephant who's been fed nothing but dodgy Mexican food for a week. Also, you can feel free to scream at me about how objectively wrong I am, and I'm sure you're right, because I don't live in a major city, so my local cinema's prone to showing, like, massive blockbuster fare and not much else. This also isn't helped by the fact I only have the time and funds to see one film a week due to a combination of, you know, being at school, my shitty job, and my immeasurable sexiness and popularity means that I'm busy a lot of the time and lazy the rest of the time. So I'm sure that a lot of stuff came out this year that shits all over my picks, but I can't judge them if I haven't seen them. With that in mind, for anyone who didn't get my incredibly subtle and of course well-written hint at the end of my last review, my number 10 pick is a film I really didn't expect to be any good at all. I, mean, I suppose any year where a sequel to Annabelle could be the most could be somewhat decent is a year where a clown that hides in sewers could be the most pant-wetting thing all year. Yes, it's it. I, th I thought it would succumb to the same old horror cliches, trite jump scares, and would ultimately be another adaptation to throw on the ever-growing pile, but it proved just because the 1990 miniseries was... A laughable mess, let's be honest. That just couldn't possibly hope to properly adapt Stephen King's book, probably because Stephen King was high as a cloud when he wrote it. I mean, seriously, it ends with the main character entering its mind by concentrating hard, I think, and then somehow speaking with a giant cosmic turtle who threw up the entire universe after a night out with his reptilian mates, I suppose. But also because TV in the 90s was incredibly safe, and you would never catch a book adaptation featuring a child or orgy in a sewer anywhere near the medium. Which, yes, that did happen. So while hopes were nevertheless higher for a cinematic adaptation, putting one kid in the film and asking him to play the main character has often proved to be disastrous. See, the other big Stephen King adaptation of the year. So putting seven of them in seemed like a total recipe for disaster. Even so... It had some of the best child talent I've seen all year, really. A genuinely lanky, evil, Swedish, scary clown thing that is... <laughs> and it was, and all in all, it was, a, it was a pretty delightful throwback to 80s horror, like Nightmare on Elm Street meets E.T. So despite some serious shunting of some of the main characters and a clown who I just wish would stay a clown, it managed to be pretty scary, and it still has a great sort of adventurous and, like, camaraderie, I don't know how you say that word, but you get what I mean, that kind of feel. And ironically, it comes out of time when the source material would be more welcome on TV than ever. Hell, if Game of Thrones can get away with its shit, it should be child orgies all around for another miniseries adaptation. But I'll settle for the part two film. I mean, as long as as long as they inc as long as they remember to include, do you have Prince Albert in a can? That's probably not as good as I think it sounded. I'll at least not riot. So yeah, that's it. A horror romp that. It's a surprisingly faithful adaptation, and it managed to be scary, and have good child actors. And yeah, one of my favourites of the year. But, we still have nine better films, nine better examples the industry should take some inspiration from, and nine better films to discuss in more detail. And, see you later, uh, my buddies here.